In the city of Kabul, high above the chaos, far from the noise of war, dusk is deceptively peaceful. For while the rhythms of the marketplace continue here unaltered, elsewhere there is change, massive change, for some dangerous change, as the West negotiates its long goodbye and peace talks with the Taliban, sometimes on, sometimes off, climb the political agenda. It has the potential to lead to civil war, yes. It has. I may not be the commander of the civil war, but the undercurrent that I'm detecting in the country is massive. Massive, and that's neglected. The modest office, the lone staffer in the corner, belie the status of the man. Amrullah Saleh is Afghanistan's former spy chief, until 2010, in charge of national intelligence. For him, when the Taliban suspend talks, it proves the folly of engaging with them. Taliban look at it this way. They say, OK, 10 years. We have run the marathon. It's another mile. For them, it's not a peace process. It's another mile to dominate the country. They have not given up their maximalist agenda. Who have given up? The whole world. It's a shame. Fazia Kufi is not giving up her maximalist agenda. She is a member of Afghanistan's parliament and its deputy speaker, a single working mother who receives male constituents in her home. Two years ago, the Taliban tried to kill her. You can die at any second. And the bullets were everywhere in my car. Um, I initially tried to hide myself um, by throwing myself under the seat of the, the, the vehicle. They wanted to kill me because um, I'm somebody for them. And I'm proud of that if I'm somebody to Taliban. And if they think that I'm uh, against their beliefs, I'm proud of that. What Fazia Kufi is not proud of is her president, Hamad Karzai. Talks, she says, are a game on his side as well. Peace talks with Taliban has been always used politically. Sometimes President Karzai used that, that against the international community to demonstrate that he is one step ahead of others. Sometimes he used it against his political opponents to say that, OK, if you don't listen to me, I will bring Taliban tomorrow. So there is not, no actual uh, process as such that you trust it and there is like a start and an end to this process. Mm, I haven't seen that. Do you think a process has quietly, secretly begun? That's why we are furious. We say we are betrayed, both by the government of Afghanistan and by those who are pursuing talks and transparent talks from the West. We are not part of it. And you may ask, who are you? We are anti-Taliban. Anti-Taliban people of Afghanistan are not part of it. So this is not peace, it's a deal making. Down an icy Kabul lane lives a family with whom the Taliban have had their way. Mohammed and his wife Malika fled their home province of Bamiyan. He finds work as a laborer when he can. They have just two rooms, but they glow with pride, laughing that after three girls, this little boy, child number four, is definitely their last. It seems he could play hide and seek all day. What he doesn't know is that his Asiatic features will mark him out as an Hazara, a member of Afghanistan's most persecuted community, which is Shia, not Sunni, and so set upon by the Taliban. You know, they were coming into our villages. They were in their four-wheel drives. They did not get out. They just kept on randomly shooting in the houses, in the mountain, everywhere. For three days they were just killing everybody. Shakiba listens to the family history, the story of why other kids have grandmothers, but she does not. When they came, I escaped. I came to Kabul from the mountains. When everything was on fire, my mother tried to save the house by throwing down the firewood burning on the roof. That's when they shot her. High above Kabul lies the path to a man who is certain that the ravaged and the ravager can be reconciled. He knows the Taliban. He was one himself. The former Taliban deputy minister for the promotion of virtue and the prevention of vice now sits on the government's high peace council, scorns on camera interviews, but today relents, just as long as the woman in the room sits at the back. Peace is achievable, he says, though Afghan women, they may have to sit out the back as well. If the peace negotiations are in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey or Afghanistan, there may be some restrictions on whether women can participate or not. There may be some place where women can't go. That's why I'm saying maybe. 
But to the world of the burqa, of not being seen, not being heard and cowering at home, Fazia Kufi does not wish to go back. And I have experience looking at the world from the window of my house, which the world looks so small. All the opportunities of the world are abundant to all the women. My fear is that we are obliged to set home again. Morvi Kalamudin bristles at any suggestion that women were treated badly in the past. You haven't seen one of them. Someone's told you. You heard it from the media. You heard it from those people who were against the Taliban. You cannot show me one woman in all of Afghanistan who was punished by the Taliban. I was the person in charge. But Morvi Kalamudin, fondly remembering the Taliban past, hoping for moderation tomorrow, is the radical of yesterday. These streets await the future, where guns proliferate as does corruption, and a bold splash of lipstick can be chosen over the burqa. So what do today's Taliban think? Well, the classified NATO report stated the Taliban 2012, based on 27,000 interrogations of some 4,000 captured Taliban, came to this conclusion, quote, Taliban commanders and their rank and file members increasingly believe their control of Afghanistan is inevitable. And though they suffered severely in 2011, their strength, motivation, funding and technical proficiency remain intact. In which case, some ask, would they really be interested in talking peace? We went to Kabul's main prison to ask one of them. Abdul Aziz is indeed today's Taliban. Incarcerated in Pulichakri prison, he is neither bowed nor broken and he is certainly not offering peace. Merely scratch the surface and out tumble extraordinary predictions. So do you expect that the Taliban will win and come back to Kabul? For sure. If the foreign troops leave, the Taliban will come back to Kabul soon. You say that the Taliban will come back to power in Kabul if foreigners leave. How quickly will that happen? I believe in one to two months, the Taliban will capture Kabul. It is the smile that says it all. That confidence of the Taliban come from a corrupt political Kabul. So when they see this government stands for nothing, and it is a government for its survival, the political survival of its leaders, it's ready to enter into any dirty deal, that gives the Taliban the confidence. We know the Taliban and they know us. We will not be defeated in 20 days. If the Taliban take control of Kabul, do you expect that Mullah Omar will come out of hiding? No, If the Taliban capture all of Afghanistan, including Kabul, yes, Mullah Omar will show himself on the media, and he will talk with the media, and he will show himself on TV. Abdul Aziz calmly returns to his cell, confident the Taliban will prevail and adamant there will be no peace talks until all Taliban prisoners are set free and the bounty is taken off Mullah Omar's head. What is moderation? They are the same. It's the same Mullah Omar. Could Pol Pot of Cambodia be modified? No. Mullah Omar and Pol Pot in, the, in, in his policy, they are the same. Mass murderers. <laughs> In the camps of the displaced, all the talk of victory, of talk started, stalled or suspended, rings hollow and obscene. This is where war washes up, where plastic shoes suffice in mounds of snow, where the feeble undertake the futile, and pain is all around. Miralem fits his surname well. Ramjan means sorrow, yet somehow he faces destitution smilingly. This is my youngest child. <laughs> Miralem and his family are Pashtun, same as the Taliban. From the south, same as the Taliban. And he respected them when they were in power. During the Taliban, if you had a bag of gold, there was no one to steal it from you or take it from you anywhere, be it the mountains or the desert. The Taliban had that effect on people. But Miralem has no bag of gold. He feeds his children bread and potatoes. During the cold, there was a time I kept the stove on all night. Honestly, I sold things to buy firewood. They are here because this is better than being caught in the crossfire in their home province of Helmand. If one Talib were to shoot from behind my house, there will be airstrikes on our house and our children will be under the dust. It is perhaps Afghanistan's most common refrain that all of this suffering somehow is someone else's fault. Yet at least in part the evidence keeps rolling in that it is.
That same classified NATO report found that senior Taliban leaders meet regularly with Pakistan's intelligence agencies who advise on strategy and relay any Pakistan government concerns. Said one detainee, the Taliban is not Islam, the Taliban is Islamabad. Amrullah Saleh argues it's Pakistan that should be attacked. You have 27,000 reports showing that the headquarters of your enemy is headquarters of Pakistan army. So head it. And yet you know that... Don't sell us. But you know that would bring about a regional conflagration. Well, if that is the, ba the big problem, so why the West should sell us out to appease Rawal Pindi? Because you don't have nuclear weapons. Exactly. We are poor, our blood and our dignity is not counted. You have come to the point. Exactly. One, two, three, four, five. One, As five, night five, falls, Fauzi Akufi's daughters sing their way through their homework. Laughter fills the house and death hovers close. Their father died in a Taliban prison. The girls were in the car during that failed assassination. Now their mother has set her sights on the presidency and they all know the potential cost of public service. I got a letter from our security that um, the Haqqani group would like to assassinate you, so please take some measures. And it's very funny because you know, you know that you will be assassinated. What measures can you take in, in a situation that they already could enter our bedrooms of our politicians when they would like, wanted to kill them? So you, never, uh, you are never sure that um, you know, uh, they might be under any identity, any clothes, any face. Uh, that will come to your house and especially when you know that something is going to happen um, it's like uh, every moment that thing will happen and yet you're smiling <laughs> you're laughing <laughs> 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 this is not funny <laughs> uh, do you want me to cry <laughs> before i i'm get you know killed so as the west searches for the ending to its story for afghans it feels more like another beginning for this nation which lives amidst heavenly beauty, but has walked its journey for so long through hell.